Hi, Colin and Emily. Hey, how are you doing? Okay, I think we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, if you haven't already, if, you wouldn't, if people wouldn't mind muting their um, microphones, it'd be great. Uh, yeah, so hi everybody, welcome to the Modern and Contemporary Forum in the History of Art at Yale University. Um, before we hear from, <clears throat> excuse me, Alexandra Thomas and our invited, get, our invited speaker and artist, um, Laura James, um, we would like to explicitly name the entangled catastrophes of settler colonialism and racial slavery, especially regarding the material foundations and ongoing functions of this institution, Yale University. Named after a slave owner and built on land that belongs to Mohegan, Mashantucket, Pequot, Eastern Pequot, Scaticoke, Golden Hill, Pagasset, Neantic, the Quinnipiac, and other Algonquin-speaking people. We thank all the migrant laborers and working class people, predominantly Afro-Latinx, Caribbean, and other immigrant women for the underpaid work they do in order to maintain the university functions, especially during COVID-19. Although we as students and professors are working remotely, there are still workers taking care of various Yale buildings. Today and every day, we honor Black and Indigenous peoples and our ancestors whom Yale and all other settler institutions which is to say monuments to white supremacy owe the world. We encourage you to remain committed to reparations for racial slavery, sovereignty, and land back for all indigenous peoples. This semester, we have heard from a handful of black and indigenous artists through this forum, including Tamar Clark Brown, Isaac Karyuki, Janine Freyna Jutli, Thema Igaras, Adajoke Tugbiele, Emma Robbins, and now Laura James. We hope that these events have inspired you, and I hope that you will join me in recognizing the invaluable labor of these artists, as well as that of Alexandra Thomas, the primary organizer of today's event, who also happened to complete her first round of oral exams this week. So congrats, Allie, on that, of course. Um, so thanks, everybody, for joining us today. I'm going to go ahead and hand it back over to Allie. Thank you, Isabella. Okay, so I'm gonna share my screen and embarrass my friends a bit. Okay. Can everybody see that? Yes. Okay, cool. So before I introduce our invited speaker, I'd like to tell a story. Um, this is our last event of the semester, and for those of you who have been to our previous gatherings, you'll know we often highlight the intimacies and care behind the scenes. Um, I, at the first event, I spoke about Isabella and I's friendship and how it inspired the, the event. Um, last week, um, Emma Robbins gave her art artist talk, and she also happens to be Isabella's big sister. Um, but this story today starts in, starts in 2014. I was, I was at Brandeis University um, my first semester. I was a black working class girl, still closeted, trying to fit in, um, pretty nervous. I went to a feminist majority leadership, leadership alliance meeting and it was like, what is this? Oh no, what I think. Um, and how I could find my voice as a queer black feminist. Um, one of my favorite quotes is from our mutual friend Gwen, who says, I love my friends' moms because they gave me my friends. Um, finding out that Zuri's mother um, is Laura James and exploring her art has been an invigorated has been an invigorating experience for me. Um, when I see the when I see the divine black is beautiful aura in Laura James's work, um, it makes me even it makes even more sense to me um, how Zuri is the empowered feminist and creative soul she is. Um, years back, my mother gifted me a calendar of Black American art, 
And it started out, when I saw Laura's work in that, it started as, oh my gosh, my friend's mom has art in this, that's so cool. But then slowly turned into spending a lot of time looking through her art. Um, I look at her paintings and illustrations and I see a deep and radiant love for black folks, for the people. So, <clears throat> now we're going to introduce. Um, at the heart of Laura James's work is a desire to share something with the world, a story of feeling, confidence, beauty. I'm fascinated by the idea that people can see what I see in my mind's eye and blessed that I have the ability to show them, she says. A self-taught painter and, il and illustrator, James has been working as an artist for almost 30 years. As a child, she spent much of her free time at the Brooklyn Public Library, the only place her parents would let her go on her own. There, she explored her passion for literature, photography, and later painting. Her African and Caribbean American heritage and a love of stories, design, and color are all elements that have, been, have, that have always been present in her work. Painting in two styles she refers to as sacred and secular. James separates and combines the sacrosanct and the ordinary and has created a, a diverse body of work that is her own. Originally captivated by the Ethiopian Christian art form, James's sacred work employs this ancient way of making icons and expands on the collection of stories traditionally painted in the style. James is pleased to help Black people see themselves in their sacred texts, in African religions and Christianity, a place where racialized people have curiously been excluded in the West. To that end, James was, del was delighted to illustrate the Book of the Gospels lectionary published by Liturgy Training Publications in 2001. The book is used worldwide by numerous Christian denominations and is currently in its second edition. Her religious art is at the forefront of the movement towards a more inclusive representation of biblical figures. Miss James has recently expanded her repertoire to include sacred images from other traditions, including the veneration of the divine feminine, Yoruba, Buddhism, ancient Egyptian themes, and Islam. Um, LTP book designer Anna Manhart writes, quote, we like Laura's work because it is distinct, memorable, popular, and timeless, telling stories in a simple, fresh, and direct way. People respond to the expressive faces, eyes, and gestures, colors, and intricately patterned clothing. Her art appeals to varied ages and cultures. The depictions carry the tradition of Ethiopian iconography to the present day, bridging centuries and continents. The youngest of eight sisters, her mother a homemaker, domestic worker, and nanny, James's secular work reflects her life, a world surrounded by women. She proudly paints women strong, majestic, and fragile, adding beauty to mundane aspects of life. James's ongoing work, the Nanny series, abstracts images from her childhood with the use of surrealist painting in postcolonial theory, to address issues of gender, work, and motherhood in the lives of domestic workers living in New York City. For two decades, James has represented, has been represented by Bridgman Images, the world's leading specialist in the distribution of fine art for reproduction. James's work can be seen in hundreds of publications from textbooks to film worldwide. James has illustrated two children's books, both written by Olive Sr and published by Tradewinds Books. Um, Anna Carries Water from 2014 and Benunu Hair, um, which was released in 2019. Both stories are centered on empowering young black girls and building a foundation of self-love within artists directory, an online database featuring some of the Bronx's best visual artists. Um, this project is a collaboration with over 200 Bronx artists and organizations um, to promote the arts and culture being created today in the Bronx. Besides the directory, um, BX200 presents events and art exhibitions around the city. Miss James has curated numerous exhibitions over the past 30 years and enjoys and enjoys using her organizing talents to help other artists shine. 
With an eye on creative solutions, collaboration, and service, she is also an arts activist and a proud member of, a, of her community board. Besides working as a commissioned artist and illustrator, Laura has been working for years on paintings that deal with race and class in America and the Caribbean. The first piece with this theme, American History, painted in 2001, was created after she read a newspaper article about a black man who was dragged to death behind a truck in Texas. Laura is currently working on what she hopes will be some of her best and most important work, a series of 10 paintings around the theme of race and reparations that focus on, focuses on the why more than the how, and each piece will show how the past is still being realized in the present. She, she lives and works in the Bronx. Let's welcome. Laura James. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Alexandra. I really appreciate the, the invitation. And, um, you know, I, I love to see you young people. I really do. And to hear you, you know, to hear you talk and be so brave with the things that you say, it's, it's very, it's very, it's great. I love it. Okay, just wanted to say that. So let's get started. My original inspiration. Well, I like to start with these pictures, you know, when I'm talking about my work, because, you know, I, I grew up going to church with my family. We went to a Brethren church. Um, it's sort of, it was sort of, a, I, I hate to say it, but it was sort of boring, you know. We didn't have art on the walls or, you know, we didn't have drumming or anything like that. It was just the one piano and framed, um, framed uh, verses on the walls. And it was, you know, as a child, you know, you just sit there and you're, 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 you're sort of listening and you don't really understand what they're saying. But, you know, we have these children's Bibles and they're filled with pictures. And the pictures are very strange <laughs> because Jesus is always very white with blonde hair and blue eyes. And he just looks sort of, you know, he doesn't look like anybody else in the, in the book. And then, you know, you come across the black people who are inevitably um, you know, serving or, you know, in a subservient role. And in this book in particular, you know, they were, they hardly looked human. So, you know, it's like a mixed message. It's confusing. You're not supposed to have pictures, but you do have pictures. The pictures don't reflect you. And it's just all sort of, you know, it's sort of, you know, is, is this for me? You know, I, I kind of didn't get, get that feeling. And I, I suppose I didn't really realize it so much when I was young, but then when I saw this book, as an adult, it really struck me, you know, you know. So back in, I guess it was 1990, I was walking around in my neighborhood in Brooklyn and I saw th this book in the, in the, in a store window <laughs> and, you know, it's like angels and they were black and I was like, oh, that's, I like that. That's really cool. And I looked in the book and there were all these fantastic paintings. And I, I was really actually taking photographs at the time. I hadn't really painted much, but you know, because everything was outlined, I was like, oh, I, I can do that. I'm gonna try to do that. <laughs> so I, I bought the book and I went home and I started to copy some of these pictures and, and I did a good job at it, I think. I'm gonna show you some of the, a few images. Oh, sorry. First, this is a picture of uh, uh, three of 11 rock hewn churches in Lalabella, Ethiopia. And if you don't know, Ethiopia is a Christian country and has been since the fourth century. So they have a very long tradition of Christianity in Ethiopia. It's a very fascinating place all around actually. So these are a few images from that book, 18th, from the 18th and 19th century, saints and angels. And the, um, the red faced images of a demon and they make him look so, so fierce because they say that if he, if he looks at himself, he'll be scared and run away. <laughs> there are lots of stories in Ethiopia, lots of legends. And here are a few more pictures of um, original Ethiopian art. So it was when I, when I found the book and I was so taken by it, I tried to find more Ethiopian art. It was very difficult at the time. There weren't many books and you know, we, we didn't really have the internet, so I couldn't Google that, <laughs> Google Ethiopian Christian art at the time. But, um, you know, slowly more and more um, books and exhibitions came, came, up, came out. So I got to see more and more 
and I really, I actually really like the text, the um, the manuscripts. I I like, you know, I couldn't understand what what the words say. They're in Amharic, but I just like the idea of a story and the words together. So now, now these are some of the paintings that I did. Um, the first piece here, I was, you know, going through these, going through my slides for this talk, you know, <laughs> I was really surprised that these two paintings were made in the same year, you know, pretty close to one another. And, you know, I, I guess I was actually painting a lot. So I, I got better as it, as I went along, but you can see from this first one to the second one, you know, um, there was a lot of improvement. And then um, we we used to live in a brownstone. We had a great big wall. So I was like, I'm going to make a humongous painting. So I tried to do this King Solomon and Queen Makita of Sheba, which is a very popular theme in Ethiopian art. And so I was like, I'm going to try to do one of those. And and I did. <laughs> and I can't see what year it is because my, my screen is being blocked here. But it was one of the early pieces that I did. These are all pretty early pieces. And again, I like to tell a story and it's even better when you can write words so that people don't have to imagine, you know, I mean, you can imagine what it is, but the Bible has text. So you can add that and just, it just makes it even more meaningful. And then I, I was interested in telling some of these Ethiopian stories, because like I say, they have a lot of legends. There are a lot of different saints and you know personages in Ethiopia and you know people didn't know the art and they certainly didn't know the story so I was happy to to do that um this first piece here St. Tekel Hamanot he was a he was a priest who built churches and he did many things but he thought he hadn't done enough so at the end of his life he he went into a cave and he stood and prayed until one of his legs fell off and then he prayed some more until he died so that's his story. And this is actually a picture of the first commission that I had, which was a mural that I was commissioned to do by the um, Crown Heights Youth Collective. Um, this was around the time of the race riots in Crown Heights back in 1991. So they asked me to do a peace mural, which is what I did with these angels. And I painted 11 angels around Crown Heights and actually years later just a, maybe three or four years ago I, I carried an exhibit of Sh Jamel Shabazz's work and I was doing a studio visit with him and he had you know just a stack of photos and he had this photo that he took of someone in the street in Crown Heights back in the day and there was my angel with my name and everything I was like wow it was very exciting <laughs> so I, I had to make the PowerPoint. And then here are some more paintings that I did in the Ethiopian Christian art style. Um, you can see here from 1999 to 2006. You know, like uh, like uh, Ali said in the bio, I really I have expanded on the types of um, stories that are told traditionally. You know, they're mostly crucifixion and Mary and Jesus and the saints and you know, Book of the Gospels. But you know, there are there's just so many stories in in the bible there's just like you could i couldn't paint all of them but i tried to paint as many as i could and i i like uh i like design i like uh details and things like that these are two um angels of the four directions that i did when i don't know and then here I'm showing one of my favorite commissions that I got from um, Brother Tyrone Davis at the um, Office of Black Ministry of, for the Catholic Church here in New York. It was a painting for um, Cardinal Timothy Dolan when he was elevated to Cardinal. And uh, uh, Brother Tyrone said, you know, his favorite verse is, Lord, to whom shall we go? So he asked me to make a painting about that. And I was like, oh, that's just like five words. What am I going to do? <laughs> but, you know, I, I really loved it. I think it came out nicely. 
And this is actually the last painting that I did. It's, I, I think it's done. Um, it's a commission for some folks down in North Carolina. Jesus teaching Nicodemus. So, and it was interesting because this is, it ha I, I wrote, it's from John 3. So that, I guess the most famous verse in the Bible, John 3, 16, is I've written it here. And I was like, wow, I'm surprised I've never had a chance to, to um, illustrate Nicodemus or that, or that, uh, that verse. So, you know, again, there was just so many stories. And, you know, my, um, I guess my most important commission was to make paint, make illustrations for the book of the gospels back in 2000. And, you know, they're illustrations, but they are paintings because that's basically what I was doing back then, not really drawing at all, but just painting. And I didn't, they actually found my work online and they they were in the middle of doing a new reading of the Book of the Gospels, which is, I suppose, the most important book in the Catholic Church. They carry it in the church on Sundays. And, you know, people don't really look inside of the book. They hold it, like, as you can see, this man is doing. And But they wanted to, um, they wanted to have more, the, the, they wanted the images to be more representational of the people who are actually going to church. So they want, they were interested in showing, you know, something different. And I really had no idea what kind of book this was and how important it was. Um, I had only four months to make the images because they were sort of on a time thing. And when I got the book in the mail and it was like this big heavy book, I was just, I, I was just like, wow, this is something. And then, you know, having been able to see it carried into the church, on various occasions it really i'm you know it's oh god i hope i don't cry <laughs> you know it's just like coming from church where i was just not even interested at all because it had nothing to do with me i felt you know it was just great to see this so i'm moving right along so i don't cry so here are some more images from the book and these are all painted in 2001 And um, about a year later, Brother Tyrone Davis, who's the man in the, on the upper left side here, he um, organized an exhibit of the Bible and some of the paintings from, that, from the book at um, Cardinal Egan's offices in, um, in the city. So people came and it was, it was really great. And um, I'm showing here a few years later, we had an, ex I had a, a retrospective actually at the College of New Rochelle, and we were able to display pretty much all of those paintings from the book and, and more. There were about, there were almost a hundred paintings of mine there, and it was just 15 years. I was like, wow, I didn't realize I had so much work. And this beautiful paint, this beautiful photo that I love so much with all these people are some of the people who collected my work, who came to the exhibit. And I, you know, collectors are wonderful people. <laughs> That's all I have to say about that. And here you can see how the book has been used in in um in the media, I suppose. Here in this um, film, Spike Lee film called Chirac. Um, it was in the scene in a church, and you can see like the people are dancing around the book. It was quite interesting to see that. And on the bottom, um, someone sent me this photo of an ordination mass in Uganda where they were carrying the book. So these images are from a project that we did, uh, sending 14 stations of the cross to a Catholic church in, um, in Haiti. We did a, crowd, a crowdfunding campaign to be able to produce the work and to send original paintings and also um, two sets of reproductions to churches in 2014. Uh, uh, my friend, uh, Patricia Brinchall, she has an organization called From Here to Haiti, where she, they go and they actually raise money and they go and fix roofs and, ch and churches in Haiti. And she was telling me a story about how, you know, one church that she was working with, they, the priest actually ripped out um, just little drawings from a little magazine with the 14 stations and pasted, pasted them on the wall because, you know, they couldn't afford to get 
the stations. So, you know, I said, hey, we should, you know, we should try to do a project where we can send stations there. And that's what we did. And here is a picture of um, students or children who they, they lined up on the steps to take a photo for us in 2009. Okay, so moving on. So as I was preparing this, I came across this quote, which I thought was quite interesting. It says, if the central religious figure was a woman giving birth and not, as in our time, a man dying on a cross, it would not be unreasonable to infer that life and the love of life, rather than death and the fear of death, were dominant in society as well as art. So as I said before, um, Mary was is a very um, popular image in Ethiopian Christian art. So I was happy to um, continue to paint this female mother image. And I've made many paintings of um, Mary over the years. These from 1991 all the way to, 96, to 2006. And here are some more images. I've got, I've got lots of paintings of women in the Bible, which is something, not something that you see a lot of in traditional Christian art. And this is this was a piece that I was commissioned to do by um, liturgy, liturgy training publications again for uh, the 2015 year of Grace Calendar, and the theme was Bible women. So, um, pretty much as I was practicing and learning to paint in the in the Christian Ethiopian Christian art style. I was like, you know, I want to do something else that's not always, you know, religious, let's say. So I I um I started to paint in this way. I I like to look at books. I'm I was just thinking to myself, how did I get to be doing this? <laughs> it's like so it's like different, you know, how did I get to just like because you know, I really am self-taught. I sometimes I think to myself, did I really teach myself how to do this? And I guess I did, you know, but I'm fond of saying that everything I learned, I learned in a book. You know, we really did spend pretty much all our time at the library. And, you know, before I guess Google, you could find anything in a book and, you know, pictures and photography and just looking, you know, just being aware of your surroundings and looking at things, um, you know. So this painting, Black Girl with Wings, is one of my favorite paintings. And, you know, she's not an angel. She's just a black girl with wings, you know. I like to paint winged women, I suppose, you know. And these are actually some of some of the early paintings that I did that were not in the were not in the Ethiopian style. My friends say, you know, the eyes are the same. So that's a, you know, it's not completely different, totally different. I remember people telling me early on that I should just do one or the other, you know, because people will be confused if I have these two different styles of painting. But um, you know, I couldn't do that because that's not, you know, I just didn't even. I thought about it for a minute, but I was like, well, I just want to paint what I want to paint. So that's what I did. Even if they're different, I, I think that people can, maybe they can see the similarities. So here are some more paintings of women, which is like uh, Ali said, is one of my favorite themes. I'm just thinking to myself, like, what else would I paint if I didn't paint women? Like, I have, I don't know. <laughs> this piece here, woman, woman flying. I really like that. You know, I definitely feel like, you know, talk about feminist, whatever that means. Like, 
you know, I just knew that women can do whatever men do, obviously. <laughs> you know, my, my mother was, um, you know, she was, she definitely was, you know, for lack of a better word, subservient to my father, but she certainly could do anything. So she was a good role model in that way. And here are some mothers. You know, I have three children, so I know all about being a mother. These these first two pieces were um, sort of self-portraits that I did when I lived in a tiny little apartment in Brooklyn with the kids. And in the first piece, I live in a closet. I just felt like I had to paint that because I, I really felt like I lived in a closet. And it, it was, you know, I was like, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a painting about this. So these are some mothers. And this, this was a commission for a man, the man here in the back and with the blue shirt. And he wanted to, you know, he, he's, there were, his family is Puerto Rican. And he was saying, you know, he, everybody in his family is like a different shade. And he really wanted to see that in a painting. So I was happy to make this for him. It's, it's kind of interesting how that is. So moving on, I thought that painting sort of went, was a good segue into this. Um, so the next set of paintings are images that I did based on statuettes or statues. And this piece, I she doesn't have a good name, the statuette, but she's, you know, um, I guess you would see her like in a, um, Botanica or something like this. I actually saw a, this figure in a in a studio in Puerto Rico, and you know it was in you know all of the little girls are the same color. But I I thought to myself, you know, in the Caribbean there's every single race of people in the Caribbean. You know, and not they're not just visiting. You know, they actually live there. <laughs> you know, they're from the Caribbean, like every single race of people. So I wanted to make a painting like that, and this this is what happened, grandmother which is one of my very favorite paintings. And pretty much everything in the background is are things that you would find in the Caribbean and also in Africa. The tree and the, the trees and the animals and all of this. So um, once I, I, was, I was trying to figure out like, how did I come to be painting these? And I realized that once I learned about Pinterest, I started to collect a whole bunch of goddess images. And, you know, I was like, I'm going to paint some of those. So this, this statuette, this figurine is a prehistoric or Neolithic figure, a goddess image, a goddess figure from, I think, the uh, Turkey, from that region. And I, I figured that I would make these, make my goddesses be, you know, um, you know, set in a, uh, a modern setting. So this is the abundant goddess. This is Orchard Beach goddess. One of my favorite places, Orchard Beach. And this is the coal goddess. Uh, actually, it's called coal because on the papers on the in the ground there is a poem by Audrey Lord called Cole. So I, I wrote out the, the poem. And I, I'm interested in in tarot cards and things like this. And I I have a I have a fantasy about painting a whole deck. <laughs> but these are the only two that I've gotten to so far. But I hope to do more. There's so many things to paint. There really are. <laughs> it's like, you know, if you're painting stories or myths or legends and all of this, it's like, you, I'll, I'll just never run out of things to paint. This is uh, an Egyptian goddess, Newt, which means night. And this image, Mami Wata, she's a West African um, deity. And uh, in 
in 2000, I can't see because <laughs> there's something blocking my screen, but I guess it might have been 2018, 19, I was commissioned by the, Ameri the, Museum of Ma the American Museum of Natural History to make, uh, um, so actually they saw my work online as well. They were trying to revamp uh, uh, their exhibit, Mini Mythic, which is a traveling exhibit. It travels North America and you know to different places that smaller museums and um, institutions that you know can't put on their own exhibit so they they travel it around so they wanted to have a different image than the one that they had of mommy wata and they actually um made the sculpture they they licensed the right to make this sculpture in the style of my painting and since i'm alive they asked me if i could paint it and also to paint the backdrop, which is something that they've never done because most of the time they're dealing with, you know, ancient things. And so they don't have the opportunity to ask an artist to do that with their own work. But I was happy to do that. And, um, you know, I, I'm, I guess with COVID, it's been pretty tricky with traveling exhibits, but it is supposed to travel for at least 10 years. And here are two more um, Yoruban goddesses, Oshun and Oya. And, you know, as I'm putting this together, I see like these are nine years apart already. It's like time just flies. And this, one of my very favorite pieces, Yamoja from 2010. And the, the picture with the lady dancing. I wanted to show how um, this carnival in South San Francisco used the image uh, as a backdrop and, you know, to advertise their um, carnival in 2015. So as Ali said, I have quite a few images and books and, and um, textbooks and things like this. Yeah, um, the, the second picture in with next to the Christian Center, you can see like there's a, um, a detail of my Easter painting and next to it is Jesus with the, um, with the Sacred Heart. And I really, when I got this in the mail, I was just like, wow, this is one of the very first books that I, that I got in the mail that had my illustration. And this is, the, this is one of the Jesuses that we had hanging in my house hanging in the house and when we were kids. So I was like, oh my God, I'm just hanging there. I'm, just, I'm, I'm in the company of, you know, our white Jesus, how about that? You know, and I showed it to my father. He was like, oh my goodness, you're, you, you know, you did, you know, he was, the, he, he didn't really know what I did actually. So when he saw this, he was like, oh, uh, she's doing something with her life. You know, it's kind of funny. And here are some more images. This uh, exploring psychology, they actually use four of my images on, on the um, different editions of their book. And the thing about, you know, these types of illustrations are that, you know, I, I didn't, they didn't commission me to make these works. For, actually, that's not true. The Bible documents, they asked me to do that. But most of the time, people just license the work. So they use it for what they, they, what they want to, you know, what fits for them. And it was like, when I got the, the first um, Exploring Psychology, I was like, oh, that's interesting. And then they used, it, they used three more images. So I guess there's something psychological about what I'm doing. <laughs> I don't know. And here are some more images. Um, and this piece here, uh, Finding Forgiveness with Pope Francis. I like to point this out. I, I, when I got this book in the mail, I looked at it for a very long time because it didn't look right to me. There was like something weird about it. And the more I looked, I, I noticed that Jesus was actually not the color that I painted him. And you can tell because his neck and the, and his, you know, his mouth are actually the color that I painted. And they actually lightened him up, which I, I just, I thought that was just the most ridiculous thing. And I complained about it and they were like, oh, we're so sorry. We'll never do that again. But, you know, it's just kind of weird. It's like if you wanted a black Jesus, then why are you lighting him, lighting, lightening him up? And the color is also really a bad color, by the way. So it's not very, I, you know, 
it was just weird. Down here on the bottom, this this uh, this calendar, this was from um, the Schomburg. This is a painting that they have in their collection, Girl at Ghana Beach. This is a very early painting that I love. I love this painting. And, and it hangs there actually, I think in someone's office. So this is a, an adult coloring book that I was commissioned to illustrate in 2017. Um, you know, the parables, you know, some of them are, most of them are not very long as it is. And it, was, it wasn't always easy to come up with a picture you know, that that made sense. But, you know, I, I think I did a good job. I had fun with it. And then these are two illustrations from two, the two children's books that I did with Olive Senior and Tradewind Books. And for those of you who don't know, Olive Senior is a very, a very famous and accomplished writer and poet from Jamaica and she also lives in Canada and I was very happy to work with her she's just a lovely person and very very smart and just very nice and um you know I had never I had never done a whole book like this you know you know with the story where the people have to look the same you know for like 15 pictures it was very challenging to say the least and also, you know, it took longer than they probably liked just because, you know, I'm painting and it was, you know, I wasn't using a computer or anything. There's no Photoshop here. So, but we got, I got through it and I, I liked the books well enough and they, they, um, they're pretty well received. And Bunununu's hair is the most recent one it is, they're both still in print and available, but I really, I really loved Anna Carrie's Water. It's a story about a girl in Jamaica who carries water with her, you know, with her brothers and sisters every morning before they go to school. And, you know, this was in 2014. It's still a thing that happens. And here I'm just showing some pictures uh, of children. Uh, this one, this one with the school kids, the, I guess it was a Catholic school that commissioned me to make this painting, Our Lady. And, you know, they sent me this picture of the kids. And, you know, again, you know, being a child who was just, you know, you know, didn't even think about these Bible stories as being anything that was relating to me. It's just nice to see that these children hopefully won't have the same experience. And then this, on the other side, um, I got this packet of letters one day in the mail from these students at this, um, a, an elementary school somewhere, I, I think it was in Georgia or something. And they, they uh, had a uh, illustrated count, one of the liturgical calendars from LTP. And they did a, a section on the art of Laura James. So <laughs> they made angels and sent them to me, which, were, which was pretty lovely. And, you know, I really liked the way that, that they made them look like themselves. You know, they didn't make them brown, you know? they made them look like themselves as they should, you know? So I got 30 lovely letters and that was very nice. And so the count, they, they, this is a calendar that I illustrated for um, LTP that's out for next year, 2021. And it does go to many Catholic schools, you know, throughout the country. So again, you know, happy to show children that there are other people besides blonde Jesus <laughs> represented in the Bible. And this is another calendar that's going to be, well, it's out now for 2021. And um, I was so happy when they asked me to, to participate in this because, you know, there are, there are, these are all my old paintings, quote unquote. And I really, I, I actually don't even have the opportunity to paint too many paintings just for myself anymore. Most of these I just painted for myself as opposed to for a commission or something like this. So, and they're all old, like I said. So I just love to see them all together like that. 
it's a it's a real treat to have this calendar produced. And here I'm just showing uh, this U.S. Catholic magazine had an article out earlier this year with my work, and basically it says, you know, you should be using Laura James's work in your churches to teach the Bible. That's what that's what they said, in, in seven pages, which I thought was kind of interesting. And uh, I, you know, when this coat when COVID started, I made a post on Instagram actually, just with showing different um showing some of my different images with different religions and what have you and just saying you know every we all we all have to try to get along people you know it's it's corny and it's cliche whatever but it's, it really is a truth because you know we we actually do need one another to survive on this planet and that's another story but i this man he saw my post and he made a he made a um he did a little article about it in the daily news Uh, and so actually within the past few months and within the past couple of months, um, these three things happened. I have this um, Chance the Rapper use one of my images in a video of his. Um, so that was kind of interesting. And then there's a little painting of mine in, in this fashion spread in Elle magazine. And this uh, For Life on ABC, they, they they license quite a few of my images for their set decor. So they make prints of these things. And it was, it's, someone sent me this picture. They're like, oh, is that your work, Laura? And I was like, yes. <laughs> so that's cool. And here I'm just showing um, this, this banner. We, I, I'm working with my, with my graphic designer now to um, produce banners for churches you know, because especially with COVID, how they're not necessarily open, they're um, wanting to hang banners outside their churches and schools and things like this with messages. And this uh, Fordham University commissioned me recently to illustrate this cover for their um, their magazine. You know, they're interested in in um, you know, doing better, I, I'll say, with their with race relations at the college. You know, this is um, a, a college in New York City that has had some issues with that. So they're they've actually started a commission to um, to look into that, and you know, they have a, a whole article about it. So I was happy to help them with that. And on the bottom, um, from Rockefeller University, they sort of have the same kind of issue. And so they wanted to, um, this is a banner that will hang on their gate outside the college, pretty, you know, for as long as they want, I guess. And I just try, I use uh, Dinka symbols and, you know, Black Lives Matter symbols and things like this, along with science symbols, you know, uh, again, you know, we really do have to try to live together. It's important. Um, here I'm just showing a few murals that I've been involved in. Um, you know, I like to paint outside. I like, you know, I like for people to see my work. You know, I'm not, I'm not the kind of person who just paints for myself. You know, there's no fun in that. I remember early on, I, I had a website and, you know, I was interested in being online and people were like, oh, everybody's going to steal your work. You shouldn't do that. And I was like, well, I want people to see my work, you know? It's, it's for the, it's for the people it's not just for me so i like to paint murals and uh this this uh where you see the eight panels here it's a new piece that hasn't actually even been installed yet hopefully it will be within the next couple of months it's it's for the point cdc um down in hunts point uh, uh, commemorating the 25th anniversary with different scenes of the neighborhood And I just had to throw these in because, you know, two, two brave men actually tattooed my artwork on their bodies. I figured the least I could do was put them in my PowerPoint. <laughs> and so finally, we come to race, class, and reparations. 
And I really like this quote from William Faulkner where he says, the past is never dead. It's not even past. So um, as Ali said earlier, I, I, I remember reading in 1999 about how a man was dragged by a group of men and you know dragged with a with a rope behind a truck in texas and i was like what in 1999 it was just so shocking and you know huh, i felt compelled to make this painting and it's called american history the one in the center is called alas and was i born for this and i tried to show you know the um images i guess from this um, transatlantic slave trade where you know um, black people actually sold their fellow men fellow countrymen to you know Europeans and uh, you know there it is in a picture and then the last one here a sermon for our ancestors I was thinking I wanted to make a story scroll of the Sermon on the Mount and as I was reading the Beatitudes, you know, um, the first is blessed are the meek for they, for they shall inherit the earth. And, you know, and just like blessed is blessed are the, you know, blessed, blessed, blessed. And I was like, you know, this sounds like it could be, I'm um, talking about slavery as well, you know? So the, the um, seven Beatitudes, they all, um, they actually corresponded pretty well to images of slavery so i i made this painting and on the bottom there i'm just showing how um it has been very well received in the you know i guess the 14 years since it's been painted and um ha there has been commentary written on it and what have you and uh it's on this website um which it's called visual commentary the website and it's there with um some pretty famous you know old master paintings from matthew as well so it was sort of interesting to see that so these are just some images from the nanny series which is something that i've been working on for many years and which i will continue to paint you know i as ali said my mother was a nanny and the the children actually came to our house and it was sort of it was an it was sort of interesting i was i was a young person so i didn't really get it really you know but as i got you know as an older person i i sort of um you know i reflected on it and i i wanted to paint about it from my own perspective and also from the perspective of women who you know basically take care of other people's children at the expense of their own children a lot of times uh we had many people about three women who came and lived in in our house during the during on the weekends and would work out on during the week as many people did and maybe still do and they would talk to my mother about all the horrible things that happened all week and you know as a young person i'm sitting there like what are they talking about you know it, but it didn't sound so great and then when they got their papers you know after like three years after five years after a long time they just left us you know never saw them again and i was just like where did they you know where did bernadine go it's like that she's just gone you know but you know i understand now what that was all about so these are some paintings from that series and here are a few more there were 13 altogether so far. And my sister Sonia and I actually started a project where we spoke with um, women from Domestic Workers United and had them look at the art and, and reflect on it. So we exhibited prints from the exhibit, from the, um, you know, from prints of these images along with their words at a few different institutions. And it's it was really interesting to um to read what they said and you know I really felt good because I felt like I really captured what they felt 
you know. And this is actually a slide from um, the three the three photographs of the of the exhibit were actually at um, the Borough of Manhattan Community College, and uh, I think this was a social work class that came to view the exhibit. And it was interesting, you know, you know, okay, I'm not going to get it. I'm not going to be philosophical, <laughs> but it was, it was, it was great to see them really digest what, 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 we were, what I was trying to say there and what the women were saying. The pictures on the bottom were some, you know, some of the ladies who participated came to the opening. So it was very nice to see them there. And the picture on top was an exhibit that I actually did this, of this show. Um, this past March in Florida, in Miami, at Muse, and um, you know, I'm showing here my mother and her her sisters and brothers, and Tegan people. Okay. So finally, I'm just I just wanted to talk briefly about this new series of paintings that I'm doing. Um, I'm trying, I'm, I plan to make 10 paintings on race and reparations. And, you know, like I said in the, in the bio, it's not about why, I mean, you know, it's not like, or better yet, it's not how we should do it. I, I don't know how, let somebody else think about that, but why we should do it, you know, because people are like, well, that was in the past. Well, as we know, the past is not past. And, you know, there needs to be some redress for this, um, this history of ours. So this painting is called, in, called Inheritance. And I had been thinking about this for so many years. And then during COVID, I just randomly looked, was on Facebook and a friend of mine posted something about how 60% of the wealth in America is inherited. And it occurred to me that, you know, this money is, part of our slave history as well, you know? And so I'm showing here this family, you know, <laughs> and their family and the, the a long line of people on, the, on these walls. And, uh, you know, it's set in a mid-century modern house setting, but the, the, the black people, you know, they're, um, you know, they're wearing symbols of slavery with these, chains and you know the bit that this man has and and then in the molding i'm i'm going to paint you know um people who were in the slave hold on the ships during the mill passage so so the next the next image is actually sort of disturbing you may not want to see this so if you you might want to look away but I felt that it was important to include it. Uh, this is a picture of a young boy who was lynched, by the way, of just about two months ago in Louisiana. So, and also Emmett Till. Oh God, I hope I don't start to cry. So again, it's not even past. And this final piece, not even passed, you know, I'm showing lynching scene that basically goes right up into police brutality of the day, you know, showing um, Amadou Diallo and Rodney King. Um, Trayvon Martin. And as I was painting this, as I was drawing this out, within about two weeks, Earlier this year, I got to include um, Central Park Karen on her phone and also George Floyd and Ahmaud, Ahmaud Arbery, who was um, ambushed and killed. So that is the end of my presentation. And I didn't start crying too much. I'm gonna get a tissue. Just hold on a second, I'll be back.
Uh, while Laura's getting her tissue, um, we'd love to open it up for questions. And I personally just wanted to say thank you. I think that was really amazing and beautiful. And I mean, I think obviously the circumstances are not ideal, but this, I feel myself getting emotional right now, but I just think that like art and creation and the work that we do as artists and art historians is often, you know, about more than just us. Um, and as you say, it's for the people. And yeah, I just think that was really beautiful and I'm so happy to have you. But with Thanks. that, um, I'd really love to open it up. Uh, we're technically at time, but I'm, if you're willing to stay on for a question or two, um, I'm sure we sure. get something from the audience and you can either put it in the chat um, or, you know, just go ahead and start talking. So I will be bold enough to jump right in. <laughs> close, close mouths do not. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. yes, yes, yes. Okay, fantastic. Um, so first of all, thank you so very much for sharing a part of your soul with us, Laura James. You and I just intersected just the other day on social media, and it, it, it is no accident. I, I learned very quickly of this presentation you were giving today um, from that initial connection. But as it relates to your presentation today, the work is so, um, it's a visual currency that I didn't expect. And I use that word currency um, in, in the best way. Um, you know, speaking past monetary currency, it's a spiritual currency, it's a historical currency. Um, and, and, I, and, I, and I observed you in your pauses to refrain from crying. And, and what I say to that is not to hold back because the, the crying becomes a part of the process. You know, you were translating that through your visual narratives with the work that you've so beautifully done um, and in your own way eloquently spoken of and contextualized. So I just say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A very, thank very powerful work. Thank you. Thank you, Alexis. And we will be in touch. Give thanks. Well, I'm going to jump in. <laughs> Aloha. <laughs> Aloha, Madube. I really want to congratulate you, Laura. Um, I mean, your work, you already know, I, I've told you a million times, is iconoclastic. It's amazing. It just provokes and engage critical thought about our story. And um, I, I just, Hi, I want to congratulate you, you know, on everything that you're doing. And um, one work of art that you did not mention, um, because um, for folks who don't know, I curated an exhibit. My first experience with Laura was uh, an exhibit that we did at Shop Talk and Art Gallery in Brooklyn, New York, which was called Ethiopian Artists in Diaspora. And um, that was a combination with Chester Higgins and um, Balcha Gebre Sadiq. And um, so the Black Jesus, that eight foot, or is it six feet tall big. Black Jesus that you made with the dreadlocks, mm -hmm. that's one of your, um, I think, although you don't agree with me, but I think it's one of the most significant piece of work. And um, I would love to see, well, I have seen other representation of the Black Jesus, but that one really is the Rastafari and I love it. And I love you. I love your work. You Thank just you continually did. inspire me. Thank you very much. You know, it's funny because I had so many images there, but I actually have hundreds more images. It's kind of funny how that happens over 30 years. I think Zuri has a question. Yeah, I have a question. I'm wondering, like, what your parents thought about you becoming an artist? Because I know there's, like, an immigrant family thing about, oh, you have to be a doctor. You have to get wealth because we sacrifice for you to be here. And I don't think that I ever felt that from you and my dad but as you were like first generation american your family was from antigua like what do they think please don't cry if that's oh god well i'm not gonna cry 
I'll try not to embarrass you. Um, but honestly, I have to say honestly that, you know, my parents, they actually, they, they lived in America, I don't know, about 30 years. And they, my father built a house in Antigua, you know, during the time that he was here in America. And his whole thing was, I'm going back to sunny Antigua. And so when I was 17, they went back to sunny Antigua. And I actually didn't, I, it's not that I didn't have any interaction with them at all, but, you know, how they didn't even know what I was doing, you know? And as, I suppose as long as I was not in jail, you know, it was okay, you know. Nobody called them and said, you got to come and get Laura, you know. So it, for, for better or for worse, they didn't actually, um, they had no opinion about it at all. I'm just going to tell you the truth, you know. And like I said from with that picture, my when my father did see that, that book, he sort of was like, oh, she's doing something with her life, you know. Whether he had anything to do with it or not, I don't know. And that's the answer. Laura, Laura, this is Anjanette. How are you? Hello. Hello. Hey, it's Angie, Anjanette. Yes, we'll be speaking yeah. later. Yeah, yeah. This was a fantastic presentation. I actually got to, I'm going to make a comment, but I, I became familiar with your work because I'm from Brooklyn, but really from Gorillas in the Midst. Um, ah. I'm going way, way back. Oh, wow. <laughs> when I started collecting um, right out of college and moved um, to New York City. So I knew of your work, but never had a chance to collect it, collect it others. I said, you know what? Now that I'm clergy, I'm a chaplain, I'm doing my PhD, and I'm all about public art as resistance, there's no way as I look and span my own pieces that I cannot have you in my work. And all of you, I'll just be honest with you, I want your work to, to cover my first book that's going to be coming out. So um which will hopefully be my dissertation my first published work is coming out this next year but what i think is interesting because i was a lobbyist before i became a became a clergy is that even though you're not quote unquote spiritually or theologically trained you were able to tap into things that we well as a theologian to be have parsed for a long time one you were able to understand that spiritual narratives are iconography and and resistance work but two, you also were able to tap in that, that not only did you not see yourself, your hue represented in these theological narratives, that you didn't see women represented in these narratives in ways that they should be. And so you tapped right in to that whole notion of the defined feminine. I think that's just fantastic. And not only that, that you understood just intrinsically as a woman of the Caribbean, as a black woman in America, as an activist, that you had to reconceive what it means to be woman you know that we are goddesses that we are black madonnas that we we cover the spectrum and so you you actually like it's almost like i want to call it almost like laura's canon um because you herself who felt outside of it all as a youngster how many of us did i was catholic now i'm a baptist minister and moving into a whole nother tradition but nonetheless you got that and so when you this title i had to be here today because it is for the people god is for the people um yeah, sure. most high is for the people and if we don't as an aspiring theologian as a future doctor who's talking about medical racism and all these other kinds of things uh spiritual malignancies that if we don't if we don't speak in ways that everyone can access then what are we doing and so i want to just celebrate you as as a as a as a as an artist but here's my question did you um i'll say all that thing. my question is this do you do you see your your uh wonderful pieces as as um resistance work did you start with that in your heart like that it's resistance work um that public art that it's public art and it, it, it it's said to be resistance work or or did you come to that um you know i just i just wanted to do something that i could see myself in that i liked and that the people around me would appreciate I, I understand what it has become, but I had I didn't really go, go go at it with that that mindset. Now maybe with the race and reparations and with the slavery pictures, I I'm more into trying to show something. But originally it was just 
you know, I wanted to portray something that, that I wanted to see, you know? But I don't know that I would really say that I was, res or maybe I was resisting something. I guess I probably was, you know, so, you know subconsciously. You know, I, I, I have to think about it a little bit. I mean, because that is what it is, you know? I can't say that it isn't resistance work. You know, it is, I can see that, you know? I wouldn't say no, it, it is not that. It is that, but maybe I wasn't thinking about it consciously. And I certainly was resisting the, you know, the, the blonde Jesus, that's for sure, <laughs> you know? So yes, Angie, the answer is yes. I think we'll have, we'll take this one question that's in the chat um, from Cecile and they ask, um, or they're wondering what your process is to engage with religions, with tradition, religious traditions that are not your own. Um, and they cited specifically that they have a print of the Buddha that you've done. Well, the thing that I do most, you know, the thing that I'll always do is to read about it. I'll read about whatever it is I'm fixing to paint whether it's the Bible or the Buddha or Muhammad or anything else, I'll read about it. I'll read about it so that I, and I'll read about it from the people who, whose tradition it is. You know, I'm not going to read about it from some guy who, you know, who, who's doing commentary on it. Maybe I'll get there, but I try to go to the source. So, you know, um, you know, there are books there that I, I don't want to just keep referencing the Bible, but, you know, I don't have to, I don't have to imagine how people think about their religions. I can read about how they think about it. You know what I mean? I don't have to go asking the expert. I can just read about and look at their art. And so that's what I, that's what I do. I go to the source on these things, you know, and I think to, you know, maybe to Angie's point uh, with the Bible even, and I've heard, you know, different um, religious, you know, different like pastors and things tell me this, that, you know, I'm, I really keep closely to the text, you know, because I'm not trying to put a spin on it. And that's how it is with pretty much any sacred text or story or, um, you know, um, anything that I paint. I'm not trying to put a spin on it, per se, or my own spin, but yet. I'm just trying to stay close to the original ideas that they're trying to get across because I actually, I find them quite fascinating as it is. Like, I don't have to put a spin on it. <laughs> it's already pretty fascinating. So I hope that answers your question. Great. Um, so thank you so much, Laura. Um, we're gonna go ahead and close it out. If you don't mind sticking around so we can take our usual picture. Um, Thank you go all ahead. so much. I, I, I really appreciate ask, it. Could Zuri, Karan, and and Cecile, could you guys stay? For, and Gwen, could you guys stay for the picture? <laughs> of course. Of <laughs> Thank you all so much for coming. I really appreciate it. I see so many friends here. I love you, Regina McCarthy. Regina <laughs> McCarthy is my um, kindergarten teacher. Thank you very much. Who still who still has a painting that uh, painting you did in kindergarten? Oh, no, you don't, Regina. I do. I really do. Oh, God. Yeah. Are you it's a it's a fish tank, and you even have the detail of the the uh, wire going in the socket on the wall. Oh my God! Five years old she was. You gotta send me a picture of that, Regina. Andrea yeah. from, from Fantastic Auntie. Thank you very much from Antigua. Thank you, Andrea. Great to see you. I don't even know who's all on this call. Thank you all so much. Alicia, you're looking beautiful. Oh, I love you so much. I'm so proud of you. The only reason why I'm not going to talk is because I'm going to get choked up. So anyway. And I don't want to get choked up. Okay, <laughs> goodbye. Thank you all. Bye, everybody. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Alexandria, an amazing job. Thank you as well. Thank you. Hope to see you all in person. Anna, Thanks. I see you. Happy belated birthday, Zuri. I love you. Thank you. I love you too.
I think Ellie was having internet issues, so that's why I took over the Q&A, just so we all know. <laughs> Well, Hi guys. guys. <laughs> I miss you guys so much. Sharon. Hello, Sharon. I can't hear you. You're oh, muted. <laughs> She's muted. She's muted. I'm trying to read her lips. Oh, oh sorry. Oh, there you I'm go. Sorry. This is my sister. Now she's muted. Sh Sharon? Oh, there I am, yeah. Not muted anymore, right? No. So I was saying congratulations. Great presentation. Got to see your um, your artwork from in session to now. It's been great. Thank you, my dear sister. I'm going to give you a call later. All right, great. <laughs> Good to see you, Zori. I hope you enjoyed your birthday. Thank you. Good to see you, too. And thanks, everyone. I'm going to go now. Okay, Sharon. Bye.